from Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Charlie on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Father. Yes, son. Let's see, I have a situation. I met this chick at a fast food restaurant, and I went to her house and bought bought the drinks. She wanted some drinks, took her to her house, and she left to her ex-boyfriend's house right in the middle of our, you know, date. <sighs> I don't understand, Father. Well, again, you brought her to your place? No, I went to her. You went to her place. Yes, sir. Wow, well, that's her version of turning on the alarm and having it ring 15 minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> and then, see, she left to her ex-boyfriend's house and came back and wanted wanted to do me. Well, that's what she told you. Who knows where she went? Exactly. Who knows what she was doing? I need some help, Father. Well, I mean, did you do her? Uh, Maybe. No, don't maybe me. And by the way, let me ask you this question. She left to go to the ex-boyfriend's house, so you stayed at her place? Yes, sir. What were you doing? Like going through her things, uh, watching TV? What were you doing? She had a roommate that it was kind of a double date kind of thing. So did you do the roommate while she was gone? What happened? Yes, I did. No, you didn't. Come on. It was. You said it was a double date. Well, it was uh, me and my friend, and he was uh, taking her clothes off and... Uh, I was also. It was. She was. So the two of you, uh, you double teamed her. She was down for anything. We brought the drinks, and she was down for anything. So wait a minute. So when the chick uh, that uh, left her ex boyfriend, when she came back, what did she find? Uh, you and your friend doing her roommate? No, sir. She. We pretended like nothing happened. Why did you do that? So I could get some more tell, sir. No, but the point is, <laughs> you were already in the thick of doing that. You should have kept going. Four is better than two, right? Well, put it this way. that, that It's her just reward for leaving you there. It probably was. So that's what you did wrong. I'd have continued with what I was doing. We should have. Absolutely. Yes. And the weird thing is, see, I worked right next to her fast food restaurant that she was working at. And I kept seeing her, and she kept wanting it. She, well, fine. So what's the problem with that? Uh, I want her more than I did her. You wanted what? You cut out. I wanted her friend more than I did she. Fine, she did but did I, you not want her at all? Not really. So she wasn't that hot or what? Uh, she was hot, but her friend was hotter. So you, but because the friend was hotter, you didn't want her anymore at all? Exactly. All right. It, I'm in a situation. This just happened last weekend. Yeah, but, you know, you, 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 why didn't you get the phone number? Because they live together. They're roommates. So you have the phone number? Yes. So call up the friend. What, should I just hit up the friend, or should I hit up Why not? Them? Or should I do both of them at the same time, sir? Well, uh, you don't like that one, so just to try to do the one. Try to set that up. But it would be a good time if I had both of them. But you just said you don't want the second one. True. Now, which is it? You want the second one or you don't? I do want the second one. You just said you don't. No, the first one, the first girl I met, I do not want. Right. Well, that's my point. So why do you want to get them together if you don't want the first one? A little bit of alcohol, I mean, 
Well, the same thing if you see her alone. True. Look, son, if you want the other one, call her up. Be a man. Hook it up. What should I tell the friend? Should I just shine her off? Or? Yeah, shine her off. Be a man. Yes, sir. Uh, it's entirely possible the roommate won't want to step on her friend. Yes. And we'll say no. That's possible. But yes. so what? What would you be giving up? You'd be giving up the homely roommate? Exactly. Who cares? Go for I broke. I don't care, sir. Go for broke. Yes, sir. Go to the one you really want. Tell her you want to hook up with her. And should I buy the beer? Or shouldn't I? I would buy as little as possible, and you never spend more than 40 bucks. PBR is the thing to go, sir. PBR's fine. Yes, sir. PBR could, if PBR spent any money on our show, they could be the official beer of Lycus 101. Oh, but, my God. But, that they, be the but, but unfortunately, they don't. Uh, so Budweiser and other uh, good folks who do advertise on the Tom Lycus show, they, they can be the official beer, for God's sake. Yes, sir. The thing to get in the girl's pants, I think, is the PBR for me in my situation. Well, PBR is cheap. And I'm and, following my father's rules. Right. It's cheap. And uh, anybody who's a real connoisseur of beer is not a fan of the taste of PBR. It's lousy. It's got that retro fad thing going about it, but that's it. And But it gets in the girl's pants. So you you could use it for that purpose, no doubt about it. Charlie, thank you. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Julio on Lycus one oh one with your professor. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Yes, um I have a question, man. <clears throat> I've been trying to follow your rules and everything, but uh, uh why do you say that we don't it's better if we don't bring him home? Because if things don't work out you have a stalker on your hands. Okay. What if you now, bang a chick and then she's curious about who else you're seeing? Well, but if you tell them that um, you don't want anything serious with them, and you you tell them what that doesn't mean about. anything. I had a chick at my door at twelve forty-five a.m. for forty-five minutes, forty-five minutes because I was stupid enough to bring her home. The only okay. reason I was able to get rid of her is because I have video cameras outside my house. And I threatened to send them to her employer. Now, but, uh, I mean, if you, I mean, rather, if she doesn't have a place where she can take you, I mean, you don't want to spend 70 bucks or $100 uh, taking her to a motel. Oh, I, I said it's a last resort. I said it's a, you can't rule it out entirely. But, by the way, if she doesn't have her own place, I see you're 23. What is she, 19 or something? No, 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 no. How old is she? Actually, no, I mean... How old is she? 26. And she doesn't have her own place? She does have it, but uh, after, like, uh, I went to her place, like, three times, four times, and then after, I brought her to my place. Why'd you do that? Um, Because, I don't know, because she was closer? No, no, no. You don't do that unless it's absolute necessity. Okay, now, I have another question. You don't want her knowing where you live. Do you understand? Yes. You know, no matter how much you think you like her today, someday you're going to hate her or she's going to hate you. Well, that's... And in that case, you don't want her knowing where you live. Okay, so, and how about, like, you think it's a good idea to give him, like, the real name and everything? and uh... Not if you can get away with it. And Okay. Now, the, uh, I have another question. I heard you say one time that uh, no dating uh, strippers. Why is that? Because strippers are just human ATM machines. What, did you go to a strip club and a stripper said, oh, I really like you. Here's my cell phone number. Did that happen to you? <laughs> oh, no, no, not yet, man. No, ha, ha, no, well, here's what happens. You go to a strip. It's the oldest trick in the book, Julio. You go to a strip club. Uh, you're tipping one of the strippers, and, and uh, she likes the tips. And so she comes to you and she says, oh, I really like you. I can see you from the stage. Let me give you my card. I, I give you my cell phone number. I get these calls from guys all the time. She liked me. She gave me her cell phone number. It's like she has a new cell phone number every month when she can't pay the bill. She gets a new cell phone number. Are you kidding me? Mm, the reason I they see. tell you that is because they want to get more money out of you. That's what strippers do. They get money for giving you absolutely nothing. 
So that's pretty much like um, pretty much their last resource. Strippers are hookers who don't put out. Right. Why would you want to date somebody like that? Okay, so and you said you you, you don't even get close to this to the uh, to the strip clubs, right? I I I have worked in strip clubs, uh, but I do not go there for leisure activity. I, when I'm in Dallas, I eat dinner at strip clubs. I drink at strip clubs because I'm with people who do that, and they like doing it. And many of the strip clubs in Dallas are upscale, beautiful, fantastic places with. Good food, good wine lists, and Wi-Fi connections, and all that stuff. But you will never, ever you can. And by the way, the world, everybody's a YouTube reporter. You will never see me giving money to a stripper ever, ever. Okay. I challenge anybody to take their cell phone camera and get a video of me giving money to a stripper. It's unheard of. It doesn't happen. It will never happen. Okay. All right. Now the last question. Now, um, I, I sometimes I meet girls that they're like, um, when I talk to them or when you talk to them, I, you know, usually guys, <clears throat> the um, when we talk to them and they're like, they look like they're like really difficult to get, and uh, they're like really they look mean and everything, and it's kind of difficult, you know, to get to that point. Uh, do you advise just to go straight, even though we, we're gonna get rejected? Or, or I'm, I advise you not to con not to start conversations with women at all. I advise you to dress really well and step up to the bar at a club where people hook up and just look like you got better things to do. For example, pretend you're waiting for a male friend of yours to arrive. The two of you get a drink together or the two of you are just meeting there and then you're going to go on to the next location. Do not start conversations with the attention whores that are standing around that place. If you stay there drinking long enough... Eventually, one or two of those women will come up to you and say, "What? What are you doing here? Why? Why? You're not talking to anybody. Why? You, uh, they will start the conversation for you." Okay. The, once you start a conversation, you put yourself at a disadvantage. You're begging for something, and they're holding it above you like a big raw steak. Okay. All right, Tom. Um, thank you very much. And um, take me out. Uh, can you take me out uh, old school? I certainly can, Julio. Here you go. Tom Likas. Like. 1 800 5 800 Tom. You just want sales? So that's, but that's what this is. You see, again, yeah. women can't understand. This is a course telling guys how to get laid. This is not a course telling guys how to fall in love, how to woo somebody. This isn't wooing 101. <laughs> That's not what this is. It's about getting laid. It's Like is 101 on the Tom Like is Show. It's the Tom Like is Show, Like is 101. I'm your professor. At 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Tina, you're on with your professor. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? This Not, is Tina. I'm doing great, Tina. Mm, that's awesome. Well, my husband listens to you a lot. We were talking about you yesterday in the hot tub, and I wanted to ask you a question about a certain situation that we're going through, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Okay. So we've been married for two years, been together for five years. And um, we have a business, and he builds its clothing business. And he goes online on MySpace and looks for models, right, to models. But he secret he secretly does this, okay? So I want to know, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> How about doing it the old-fashioned way? How about you call an agency <laughs> and you speak to the, the manager and you say, I'm looking for models for this particular purpose. I need this age, this gender, this mm -hmm. height, mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. race, this mm -hmm. ethnicity. That's right. Uh, professionals. See, that's a professional way to do it. I would, I would totally agree with you. There. Thank you. I just needed that confirmation. And you know what? And earlier, there was a girl that called you, too. I was listening to it. 
there's no way, Adad, we need to know that the man has money to spoil you in the future. That's like such a lie. I'm sorry. The guy does have to show that he's valuable. So, no. <laughs> Well, uh, again, uh, well, I see you on the screen. You're 26, married two years. You already have two kids? <laughs> Only. That's all I really want. I really love spoiling my children. Yeah, well, guess what? He uh, yeah. he likes looking for models while you're spoiling your children. <laughs> I know. That's very sad. You know what? I, I really don't know what it is. You know, I don't know if it's a trust thing with me that I overreact towards it or... I don't know, but I totally agree of what you said earlier, that do it the most professional way because, you know, on my space, I just think that's that's just like that's just like a chick magnet, you know? Like, you, you're just there to pick up. I'm sorry. You're there to pick up or to complain. But, well, you know, that's what I think. Uh, unless you're a musician, there are bands um, that or comedians mm -hmm. uh, who do their business that way. But that's about it. Or entertainment, yeah, that's true. Entertainment. I have a couple friends that do display their music on there. But so, your yeah. husband, your husband's not in those businesses, is he? Um, clothing, <laughs> not entertainment. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> but yep. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. There you oh, go. Dude. Yes. Nothing. No, thank you very much. I, I think you were right about that. You think so? I'm sorry. You think so? And my legs sweat. I said, do you think so? so? Yes, I do think so. You're right. Okay. This is getting painful. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Look at these calls. Ryan on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How you doing? Doing okay? All right. Good question. And uh, I just want to see what's your perspective on this. And it's... Uh, my girlfriend has been there for coming up on two months now. Wait a minute. You're how old? 20. You have a girlfriend? <laughs> Strike one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, she's 16, fixing me 17. Strike two. <laughs> and I just wonder what, uh, what you think. You know what I think. Why do you even call? Just, you know what you want? No, you time. know what you want? You want me to say, I've talked to a lot of people in my time who are 20 years old and have a girlfriend who's under the age of consent, but you sound like the one and only person who can handle it. You sound like the kind of person, even though I've told thousands of other men not to do what you're doing, you're the one who can do it. That's what you want me to say. All right, that's all I want to know. Thank you. Isn't that what you want me to say? There we go. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ted is listening to us on the online stream from Bellevue, Washington. And seeing what Ted is going to call about, it seems to me like even though we have not been on live in Seattle in several years now, some things never change. Hello, Ted. Hello, Tom. Hi, Ted. Hi, um, I have a kind of a sticky situation here. Mm. You see, um, I had this girlfriend. I just listened to the last guy. He said strike one. You see, I dumped her. Now, I dumped her because she was just getting a little, well. Why did you have a girlfriend? Why did I have a girlfriend? Well, I have no idea. I now, was, I'm going to tell you why you had a girlfriend, because, Ted, you have no game. I do so now. when you found, so, no, no, but the point is, you found a nice piece of ass, and you thought, the only way I'm going to be able to keep this is to say, I love it. Yeah, except that's not the situation. What is the situation? We'll get to what's happening today next. <laughs> Let's first talk about why you had a girlfriend, because the reason you're in this situation is because you let a girl believe she, that you were in love with her. Yeah, well, she's pregnant now. And, uh, um, but, but, well, you, you let the cat out of the bag. I was trying to deal with how you got to this point. Oh, well. Had you not let this girl believe there was love involved, there'd be a much less likelihood that, that she would want to have a baby with you. <laughs> True. Actually, she told me she just wanted she wanted a baby. I didn't think she wanted it bad enough to actually use someone to get one. Well, wait a minute. She told you that before she told you she was pregnant? <clears throat> Yeah, and, I and you like, continued to have sex with her. <clears throat> well, she told me she was going to be using some contraception. I don't care what she told you. You never believe a woman when she says she's using contraception, especially in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> what are yeah. you laughing at? 
I I don't know. It's a nervous laugh. I have years of experience in the Pacific Northwest, son, and let me tell you something. Uh, the, the biggest lie women tell in the Pacific Northwest is, I'm using something. I can't get pregnant. You are right. I mean, the Pacific Northwest is replete with fertility machines. They're all over the place. Yeah. Look uh, around you. Watch your mouth. We're on the air. Sorry about that. <laughs> um... But yeah, I'm so like, she told you, and this is the best part. She told you she wanted to have a baby. <clears throat> yeah, but I didn't think she was going to do it bad enough to not take the morning after pill. Why did you think that? I have no idea. Because <laughs> you're an idiot. <clears throat> yes, I am. How long have you been a student here? <clears throat> um, About a year. So you knew all this. But you decided you knew more than the professor, didn't you? Uh, didn't you? I don't know. I probably... Well, do, do you think I would be in the position you're in? <clears throat> no, you, were, you would not be. Why not? Because you never would have had a girlfriend in the first place. I wouldn't have had a girlfriend in the first place. A. B. Wouldn't have had sex without a condom. C. Would never have sex with a woman who says she wants to have children. Yeah, like, I don't know what to do about this, though, because she's, you know, she's, like, saying she wants to be a single mom and stuff, and I'm just like, okay, and she's saying, well, I don't want support from you, but I don't know if that means I'm going to get stuck with child support either way. Oh, sure it does. Yes. Well, no, no. Here's here's how it will happen. You'll be stuck for child support one of two ways. Uh, her hormones will start raging the more she gets into this pregnancy, and at some point she's going to say, you know what? I was talking to my best friend the other night, and she said it's time for you to step up to the plate and live up to your responsibility. And you know what? I was listening to her saying that, and I'm thinking, she's right. You should step up to the plate and live up to your responsibility. Well, it'll be that. Or it will be, how old is she? She just turned 18 this year. And what does she do for a living? She doesn't have a job. That's what this There is. we go. So, of course, when she can't afford to raise a baby, where's she going to go? Her family. She told me she's going to go to her friends and family, and I'm just like, no. Well, we have no idea. What, do we know what the friends and family think of this yet? <clears throat> well, I know what my family thinks about it. I'm talking about your family. I'm talking about do we know what her family and friends think about this yet? Not really. So how do we know her family won't say, F you. You got yourself into this. Get yourself out of it. And so here's what happens. When they say that, she goes down to the welfare department or public assistance or whatever, they, whatever politically correct term they're using down there at the welfare office these days. Yeah. She goes down there and applies for welfare, food stamps, whatever. And the state of Washington, yeah, you're driving me to drink here. The state of Washington uh, is, is second to none in their desire to find out who committed the crime of impregnating somebody. So they can come after you and take your money. So yeah. even if she says she doesn't want anything from you, the minute she applies for anything, food stamps, welfare, uh, anything, they're going to say, who's the father of this child? And she's going to tell them. Yeah. And they're coming after you, Ted. Yeah. Like, like she wants to have me over so we can talk things, talk things out. And I'm just like, uh, this, you know, I keep hearing, you know, they keep seeing all these red flags pop up because it's like, well, I mean, think about it. She wants me to be. She wants me to come meet her at her place with her aunt and her uncle there. And I'm like, how do I know this isn't a trap? You know. No, well, first of all, you're not meeting with any aunt or uncle. This is uh, between you and her. Yeah, I know. Now I see no problem with you meeting with her because you certainly want to know as much as you can know about what's going on in her head. Yeah, that, and I mean, like, I mean, like, I'm going to try to push for abortion again. I was just like, I was just like, well, you know, none, neither of us are ready. You know, I mean. I mean, like, I can barely support myself, you know, I keep, and, you know, she can't support herself at all, and I, and I told her, you know, I mean, like, you know, that would be the most responsible thing to do, to, or either that or to give it to adoption and stuff. Well, the most responsible thing to do would be not to ever believe a woman in the Pacific Northwest when she says, I can't get pregnant or I'm on something. You are very right. Yeah. But, but, of course, you ignored that part of our course and went right ahead and did it your own way. <clears throat> yeah. And now you're getting exactly what you deserve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But I mean, like, I mean, you know, she's a slut. I mean, I don't know. I just. I Did mean, you like, say what, she's a slut? What I say? Well, I wouldn't think. I mean, I don't. Is know. she a slut? She lied, she lied to me about a lot of stuff. I have no idea. 
but you kept having sex with her without a condom anyway. You didn't see the fact that she was lying to you as a red flag, and that's because, again, you are obsessed with ejaculation, and therefore all good sense went out the window. Yeah, that and, well, I mean, she didn't tell me she was lying about a lot of stuff until after I dumped her, two days after. I don't care when she told you. Yeah. yeah, yeah the fact is, she told you she wanted to have a baby. That's all you needed to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and she, I mean, most women are not even that honest with you. Yeah, most women will give you some crap like, well, I don't know, I'm only 17. I don't know if I'm ready for that. And then later when they get pregnant, they, they say, well, I'm keeping it. That's it. I'm keeping it. But but she told you. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure her parents are just going to, I don't know what her parents are going to do. I mean. Who cares? I, what could her parents do? I don't know. Probably talk some sense into her head. How do you know that they they want they, they? How do you know that they want uh, her to abort their grandchild? I'm pretty sure they're not going to want to. They're Mormons. Oh, yeah. what, what do you, they're what? They're Mormons. They're, they're Mormons on top of that. Yeah, except she's not. It doesn't matter. You wonder what the parents are going to want. They're Mormons. Do you yeah. think do you think they're abortion supporters? <clears throat> I'm guessing no. <laughs> how many how many Mormon abortion supporters are there, would you say? I don't think I've ever met one. Do you know the basic tenets, of, forget like it's 101, of the Mormon church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Do you know the basic premise there? Do you know what Latter-day Saints are? I know what Latter-day Saints are Mormons. <laughs> no, no, but do you know what that phrase means, Latter-day Saints? What's a Latter-day Saint? Hmm, Do you want to know? I'm going to tell you. Look, you don't know, so I'm going to save you the time. I'm going to educate you here, son. Awesome. Thank this you. is a religion, uh, not unlike other religions that believe in science fiction. This is a religion that believes in having as many children as they can because they are populating other planets with what they call Latter-day Saints. They don't yeah. wait for the Pope to come canonize anybody. They pump out five, six, eight children a family so they can then, when they die, their souls go populate the other planets. Jeez. Do you just... think a family like that wants an abortion? Uh, no. <clears throat> no! They, they want the soul of your baby to head off to one of the other planets, planet Romulus or whatever, up there. It's one of those planets. Yeah, I mean, like, her parents are really messed up, but, like, like her parents deeply hate me and stuff. I'm just like, well... Because I'm... you're not a Mormon! And because you're having sex with their daughter, who they want to be a Mormon. Yeah, but I like... Having... This isn't hard to figure out. Oh, I know you liked it, but now you're getting what happens. You're getting the result of playing with fire. This is what happens. Yeah. Play with fire, and you get cooked to a tender turn. And that's what's happening to you right now. Yeah, and, like, I mean, like, right now, I pretty much just am, like... I, I really don't know what I should do. I mean, like, I mean, like, I don't know. You don't know what you should do. You did it already. You know, son, you already had all the necessary tools to prevent this situation from happening. Yeah. But you clearly are self-destructive. I didn't mean to be. Son, you knew what you did violated the rules of Lycus 101. I, yeah. But you did it anyway. Yeah, I mean, I have no idea why I did. I mean, I was... Because you're an idiot. Because you couldn't believe you were getting laid. And on top of that, ooh, how nasty is this? Your parents are Mormons. This is hot, hot, hot. That's why, right? <laughs> a little. Yeah, a little bit, huh? And now you're finding out how hot it can get. Yeah. You didn't put your hand over the fire. You sat right in the fireplace, son. <laughs> you sat right on top of the logs. Yeah, more, I'm, Your pants are on fire right now. Oh, man. Yeah. <clears throat> I told you the fire was hot, but nope, Ted knew more than the professor. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I mean, like, I don't know. I mean, I just feel like I got used pretty much. Son, you, you put yourself in a position to be used. I gave you the tools to protect yourself. You had them, didn't you? I had the tools, yeah. And yeah, I... but you just threw them away. Well, technically, she threw them away. No, no. She didn't throw them away. Because women can be lying bitches. And I've taught you that. Yeah. But you just ignore it. Now you're going to blame it on her? Do not blame it on her. 
I warned you that this is how they are. I warned you, and you know I did. I mean, for some reason, I actually thought this one was different. I don't know why. Because you're an idiot who just wanted to ejaculate. That's probably funny, got yeah. no game, probably don't have other chicks talking to you. And besides, her parents are Mormons. This is hot. I wonder if her parents are... I mean, imagine if her parents could hear me in the other room banging her and banging her and banging her. Because they're Mormons and they would hate this. Oh, yeah. Really hot. Uh, hey. Now you're going to see how hot it's going to get. you think that was hot. I mean, like... <laughs> I mean, like, she just, like, wants to be a single mom, and I'm just like, what? I, because I, she's I, Caucasian, and she lives in the Pacific Northwest, and has no job. Like so many others. Yeah, but... We've warned you. This? What do you do about it? I told you what to do about it, and you say, you just told me you've been a student here for over a year. You just yeah. told me you had all the tools at your disposal. Why are you calling me now? Well, it's like the sign at the gas station that says, we fix bad brake jobs. I'm now supposed to come in after I told you how not to get in trouble. I'm supposed to now fix it for you after you ignored everything I said previously? Well, no, but like, I mean, like, I talk to my roommate and stuff. My roommate listens to you all the time and stuff, and usually I'm at work or I'm at school or something. Don't so blame it on that. No, I'm not blaming. I'm just saying. You I'm knew not to have a girlfriend at 18. You knew not to have a girlfriend under the age of consent. And by the way, if you try to escape, they could get you for criminal charges. No, she was 18 at the time. She was 18 when you impregnated her? Yep, she turned 18 in February. D d d and how long has she been pregnant? She claims to have been pregnant for about a month and three days. And I'm a little skeptical of this because, you see, I have not seen the test results myself, but I'm like, Skeptical because I heard that plan. Really? So you think time. she you think she is in the habit of telling her aunt and uncle uh, about fake pregnancies and bringing them into the picture? I don't know because her uncle might be in on it. Oh, I see. You're you're, you're off the bar graph now, son. Mm. <clears throat> I mean, like, I mean, I'm really skeptical because of like. All right, I'll tell you what. Don't believe her. Mm -hmm. We'll see you in family court. Oh. <clears throat> Well, I mean, like, I just, I don't know. Do your parents know about this? <clears throat> yeah, my parents know. Yeah, what do they think about this? I bet they're proud, too. Uh, well, not really my, I mean, my dad's not rubbing my face in it like my mom is. <laughs> <laughs> my mom's just like being like, oh, you idiot, mama. I'm like, mom, I know. I'm like, mom, Tom's going to do this to me anyway. She's like, don't call him, mom. I'm like, mom, I'm going to call him whether you like it or not, you know. Rubbing your face in it is how you got in trouble in the first place. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, she, I don't, I don't know. Really. I'm just like really confused on everything. What are you confused about? Let me make it real clear. She's pregnant. She's going to say you're the father. Her family hates you. They're going to tell her to have the baby. When she does, she doesn't have any way of making a living. She's going to ask them to support her. They're going to say, F you, you got yourself into this. Get yourself out of it. She's then going to either come to you for money or she's going to go to the state of Washington who's going to come to you and take it from your paycheck directly. How's that? Mm, that I just cleared it up for you. That's exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, that sounds really horrible. That's what's coming. And, son, I warned you about it, and now you're getting exactly what you deserve. Yeah. Yeah, I am. So you can try the Hail Mary, but I think it's more of a long shot than usual. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> Boy. I, I, hmm. Watch your mouth, son. We're on the air. Sorry, I, I didn't say the F word that time. I... <laughs> we heard you. <clears throat> Watch your mouth. Sorry. <laughs> I, I, this is like... This is really horrible. Oh, man. You did it to yourself. And not only that, you knew what the consequences would be, and you did it anyway. Yeah. This is not like you got a cell phone, and then you realized that you had to keep with the cell phone company for two years to pay an early termination fee and because you, you didn't read the contract. You knew. Well, I mean, like, she didn't really talk about having a baby, like wanting a baby until. Yes, like she did. 
Like, she did, but she didn't say it until, like, near the end of everything. Like I don't I mean, care when she said it. When you said somebody says something like that, it's time to go. But you couldn't go. You had to get one last bang in there. It was that no, one was last... The, huh? It was after the last bang. She was like, you know, I really did want to care. I'm like, what? <laughs> and it was after that. I'm just like, whoa. I'm, I'm you know, that... Well, there you go. That was on the night I dumped her. I went, but did, didn't I tell you to use a condom 100% of the time? Yeah. Did you do it? No, she kind of took it off. <laughs> she took it off. Do you, would you say that's a red flag? Yeah, that and they always break. I mean, I don't, I don't know why they always break when I use them too. Uh, they always. Maybe you ought to buy. Stop buying the ninety nine cent only store. I had Trojan Magnums. <laughs> oh yeah, Magnums. <laughs> Uh, you know, you, you know why the you know why they're not breaking? Why they're not working? You wear a magnet, it keeps falling off. No wonder. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. So you don't believe that marriage can be happy? You don't believe that it could bring people happiness? I think there's people who uh, jump from an airplane and uh, they're happy, at least till they hit the ground. <laughs> Feels like you're flying. It's the Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. Christy, hello. Hello. Yes. How are you? Do you care, darling? Huh? Do you care? Do you care how I am? (laughs) Well, sure I do. I'm doing great. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Hey, I called. Um, you know, I don't always agree with what you say, but I believe there's a lot of truth in what you say at the same time. Um, you know, I am 34. So you don't agree with the truth? Uh, I said I, maybe I agree with half of the truth. How's that? <laughs> but if it's the truth, uh, there, there's no debate about it. Well, maybe maybe you, know, you I... don't like the truth, or maybe you don't like half of the truth. Maybe not. Perhaps that's a, perhaps you have you have a great point. You usually have great points. Um, I'm 34 and I have two children. And you know, I decided a long time ago that you know, I'm, I'm single. That if I was going to have kids, that I needed to dedicate my life to them while they were young. And so, you know, I have basically resigned myself to being single until they're out of the house because. You know, I don't think I can commit to any man or really give my attention to him because my children are the ones that deserve that. Why did you have a baby with someone who's not a good father? Well, I chose to have children. Uh, yeah, but but, I, but why did you choose to do it without somebody who was a good father? Uh, no, I, 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 I did donate his sperm. Do you understand? I you... wanted to have a child by myself. So uh, that's what I did. So that there is no father in the picture. I wanted to have my own biological child, and that's what I did. And you know, and I make good money. I make ninety-five thousand a year. I'm, I'm a nurse practitioner. Put myself through college while, while my children were young. And um, well, I you know, it, I think you're living in a dream world if you have a boy and you think a boy doesn't need a father. Well, I didn't. I, he has male figure in his life. He has my father in his life. That's and that's not his father, time. and and he's not available all the time. No, not all the time. But I mean, he's well adjusted. He gets great grades. He's, I, you know. I well, mean, he's not grown up yet. We don't know what the finished product is going to be. No, this is true. This is true. However, I think you know, women who are single parents and you know have children at home, I think they would be happier if they just avoid the whole you know baby mama drama thing. You know, took care of their kids, got an education, took care of themselves financially, and didn't rely on a man to do that. Uh, again, I, I'm sure glad you're not relying on a man, and uh, I, I'm sure glad you're not trying to nail somebody for child support and doesn't want to pay, but I do believe that boys need a father. And if you're going to have a boy, he should have a father. I, but I, by the way, there's all kinds of statistics that prove that. Our email address, tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.